So we have the vehicle detection on, and as you can see right here, so you're looking at me on this video, we have a live video out going into the Ninja here, looking at this beautiful red Lamborghini. And once it picks up the subject, it holds on. And then once you get pretty tight, where you know it might be challenging for the system, it does let go, but pretty quickly it finds the subject. And you know that thing holds. This is remarkable. Now, what makes this even more attractive is that if this is your livelihood, if you're shooting motorsports, if you're shooting vehicles a lot, you don't have to think anymore. This is kind of like a cheat code. All you have to do is point, make sure the exposure is good and the composition is right, and that's it. You don't have to think about focus. And I mean, hats off to Canon. They really figured this one out. actually have a working Canon EOS R3 and we're actually going to talk about this thing. No clickbait. We're going to go right into it. Let's get this started. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you aren't already, be sure to subscribe to the Henry's YouTube channel so you know when a new video comes out. But let's just get right into this, the Canon EOS R3. The first thing I will say about this camera, it is much lighter than it looks in photos. When I picked this thing up, it felt near weightless. Okay, maybe that's a little bit of hyperbole, but when I picked it up, I didn't think there was a battery in it. Without the battery, you're looking at under 900 grams. Throw on the battery itself, which is the same from the 1DX Mark III, and you have something that's about a kilogram in weight. Now, at the time of recording, Canon made sure to clarify that this is not the new flagship. The 1DX Mark III is still the flagship camera in the US line. So you have R5, R3, and then the 1DX Mark III. That being said, I think a lot of people might find that hard to believe just because of how good this camera is. It's noticeably smaller than the 1DX Mark III, and when you look at the profile, it has this interesting line that almost looks like, well, a racing car. Holding and using this camera felt incredibly secure. Again, you can hold it in that traditional landscape orientation, and because of the integrated grip, you can flip it around and use it in portrait mode, which comes in handy in a fashion portrait environment. This is not something that may be comfortable for everyone, and well, it's not even priced to be for everyone, but for the working professional, this grip feels solid. This is something that does not feel cheap and also feels well, utilitarian when you're looking to get your job done. There's plenty of customization with respect to the buttons, and on the back you'll see that there's two smart controllers that allow you to move a focus point very quickly, like a touch screen, and it works in a way that, well, it seems to be better than using a joystick, at least in my opinion. This is a camera that was specifically designed for sports, news, journalism, documentary work, but will equally excel in weddings, events, concerts, wildlife, nature. There's a lot that this thing packs in. At the heart of it all is a stacked backside illuminated CMOS sensor that is an in-house sensor that shoots at 24.1 megapixels. You can shoot up to 30 frames per second, these 14-bit RAW files. Again, 30 frames per second in silence, and that comes in clutch when you're shooting in sensitive environments. What I also appreciate is that there's now a sort of super silent mode that reduces lights and beeps to make sure that, well, if you're in a concert hall, for example, you're not gonna be a distraction to the people that are trying to enjoy the show. Oh, and I should say that this is not final hardware, not final software, so everything I say and talk about is subject to be improved upon when the final shipping units arrive on store shelves. Now let's also talk about video because you can record 6K raw footage right into this camera up to 60p. Now at the time of recording, we cannot play with this raw footage because the codec is not supported by applications like Final Cut Pro. So we will have to wait and see how good this footage is, but on paper, that still sounds pretty impressive. 6K raw up to 60p internally on this camera. 4K footage is now oversampled and can be recorded up to 60p. You can go into 120 frames per second in slow motion, but this footage is not oversampled. Now, what this all boils down to is that if you're recording in 24 frames per second, all the way up to 60 frames per second in 4K, you're just gonna get crispier footage. 
Canon has also put in the work to offer users a multitude of codecs and formats. So you can scale up and down depending on what your footage is being edited for. So you can start with something that's 8-bit that doesn't take too much space or move into something that is 10-bit in an HDR mode or move into C-Log3 if you wanted to. And well, if you have the storage for it, again, recording in RAW. And I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, does this thing overheat? Does it shut down? Well, they shared some metrics with us and when you're looking to record 6k footage raw this may trigger the temperature warning they rated it for about 25 minutes and if you're recording 6k or 4k 120 you might hit these thermal ceilings you can set it to a higher temperature threshold if you wanted it to but again this is something that you'll be able to work around and it seems like on paper and in our test so far that these standards hold true and in some situations perform better than what Canon was rating Again, this is not final hardware, not final firmware, so I'm not here to pass judgment or a verdict on this thing. All I can tell you is that when we were using this pre-production camera, it worked incredibly well. And because of how we were shooting, turning the camera on, shooting some clips that we planned out, turning it back off, it didn't really give us an issue where the camera had to shut down because of heat and then needed to cool down for the next set of shots. As you may have noticed already, the camera has a very angled display with over 4 million dots, which is quite high compared to the industry. Now the EVF, however, a little north of 5 million dots, it's an OLED display and has a variable refresh rate of 60 or 120 frames per second, which can make it really smooth if you're capturing things like sports. And I'm sure many people can imagine with a camera like this, you're gonna be moving around, jostling around with this, trying to get your shot. It has up to eight stops of image stabilization if you're pairing it with a lens that supports it. I think that's industry leading. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think anyone's doing image stabilization better than this camera right here. The sensor itself goes up to 102,000 natively and it is something that it gives you a good amount of latitude in the field. And you pair that with a 24 megapixel sensor, you have something that you know is not gonna fill up your cards too quickly. If you're someone that's shooting events, shooting news, documentaries, sports, you have to capture a lot. You don't necessarily need way more than 24 megapixels, but you also want to be able to transfer them wirelessly or wired as quick as possible to the editor on the other side that's looking to publish these things. Now let's move on to autofocus because it is ridiculous. Once again Canon offers a robust autofocus system and they've improved upon previous systems with their new intelligent autofocus and subject tracking. This camera essentially will track your eye, your face, your head, your body, your dog's face, your dog's eyes, well, a lot of other animals, not just a dog, but I have a dog, so I'm using that as reference back on subject. On top of all that, it also will now record vehicles, specifically four and two wheeled vehicles that are meant for sports. Now, I wasn't able to test every kind of vehicle possible, but vehicles that are clearly moving rather quickly, that are clearly separated from their background, that have an inclination toward motorsports, I mean, it works pretty well. It works quite well. And you can go and switch between them and customize this to your liking. Now here's where we get into the witchcraft. There is now eye control AF, okay? Eye control autofocus, where it looks at the line of sight of your pupil and shows a little target of where you wanna focus. And then when you have press, we'll move the autofocus box to where you're looking. Here's the important thing, and this is what Canon has told us, is that you wanna calibrate this as much as possible. You wanna be able to do this in the field more often than not. So the camera learns how your eye moves and gives you the most accurate reading. The more times you calibrate it, the smarter it gets, the more accurate it gets. You can also do this in a smart way and set it up that if your eye is quickly dashing around, it's not gonna refocus again. So that only when you press the back button autofocus, it will track where your eye is looking. And when you press the shutter, it's not gonna move around regardless where your eye is, it'll lock in the shot there. Again, crazy things that seem like science fiction. When we were using this, it was damn impressive. And in some instances, it wasn't as accurate, but what I found is when I took the time to calibrate again, it worked. So here's the thing. Is it something that you're gonna use every single time? Maybe, maybe not. 
but over time, you might find yourself more inclined to use it, especially in environments where there might be multiple subjects or not a lot of contrast. This is an instance where this line of sight focusing will come in handy. And this camera, it is a consummate professional. So you can expect all the ports, ethernet, USB-C, headphone jack, microphone jack, anything that you would expect. Oh, sync terminals, all this kind of stuff that you would expect from a professional camera this thing has, including built-in GPS. So again, if you're traveling, if you're doing journalism, documentary work, this is stuff that comes and adds a lot of value to your workflow. And fortunately or unfortunately, I only had one battery to work with, but it got me through an entire production day. If I was looking to just capture video, they rated this for about three hours of video capture, which is pretty damn impressive. And all in all, it just makes for a tool that you can count on, that you can rely on. At least that's the impression I'm getting because again, not final hardware, not final software. However, in my brief time with this camera, it looks very, very promising. And there you have it. That is our first look at the Canon EOS R3. This is, while they won't say it, I think this is their new benchmark camera for the person that is capturing a lot, that demands a lot, that wants something that just won't quit on them. This is one of those cameras. More importantly though, I'd love to hear what you guys think, so be sure to let us know in the comments below. As always, my name's Gadgen. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.